Kurt Vonnegut's dark humor and innovative narrative paved the way for a new form of contemporary literature. His influential works include such modern classics as Cat's Cradle and Slaughterhouse-Five. Though it is not often that his works make their way to the big screen, his 1961 novel, Mother Night, was recently adapted to film. It stars Nick Nolte as the American playwright turned spy in World War II Germany. And I'm pleased to have Kurt Vonnegut back at this table. Welcome back. Sir. All right. Tell me about Mother Night and why it took him so long to make it into a movie. Well, what it says in the posters, Nick Nolte is in full Nazi gear, yeah. uh, is from Kurt Vonnegut's bestseller. Well, it was a paperback original, which was never reviewed. So it was, was it a bestseller or not? Well, I don't know. It was never reviewed, but it remained in print. And it was, yeah, but it, it, I bet you everything of yours is in print, right? Yes, and I'm very fortunate that yeah. way. So I don't really care what uh, movie they make of any book of mine, because the book itself is still yeah. available. And people can see what I did. Which sells the most? Slaughterhouse Five, which sells them? I really, I think they sell about the same yeah. as the, uh, yeah, I, I really don't keep track like I should. But about Mother Night, uh, I got $3,000 for it when I needed the money. And uh, I got the idea at a cocktail party on Cape Cod. I used to live on the Cape. I lived there for 20 years. Uh, and I met a spy master, who guy had been a spy master during the Second World War. And he was complaining about spy films, that they made no sense. He said, any time you have an agent inside an enemy country, this is a very sick person <laughs> <laughs> you are dealing with. It, it's quite possible the person is schizophrenic. Well, I don't understand. Why do you say that? Because in order to do something that stupid, because you might be risking your life at any it moment. It is so terrifying. Yeah. Okay. And it's an odd. I mean, it's it's unbelievably risky. It's only a nut would do it. You got to be living two lives at and the same he, time. And he 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 says, also, you've got to understand that your agent is going to help the enemy as much as he helps you. And all you can hope for is that from him you will get information you wouldn't get otherwise. And so I said, all right, let's have an American. Uh, who grew up in Germany because his father worked for the General Electric Company and was over there representing GE in Berlin. Became fluent in German. Uh, became a, German, a playwright in German, married a German actress. And about 1938, he's sitting on a park bench and a guy sits down next to him, an American, and, and starts chatting. And this guy's from the War Department and uh, uh, says, you know, <clears throat> if war comes, uh, we'd like you to stay. Mm. And uh, he, and uh, so Noldy does. This is John Goodman who, who does a beautiful yeah, job right. of recruiting him. And uh, he also says to him, you know, we can't acknowledge <laughs> you probably ever. And uh, Noldy stays because he's in love uh, with this actress he's married to. He says they're a nation of two, and they don't care anything about politics in order to survive. He out-Nazis the Nazis and becomes a broadcaster uh, like Lord Haw Haw. The British actually had a, mm -hmm. had, had a, 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 a treacherous citizen who broadcast for the Nazis, Lord Haw Haw, and he was hanged by the British after the war for treason. So I said, all right, suppose an American does this. And so Noldy does it, and uh, uh, does survive, but what he's done to survive is absolutely hateful. Is he's delivered these anti-Semitic speeches. Those in the movie are actually Joseph Goebbels. Anti-Semitic So you speech. actually took Goebbels' speeches. Anti -Semitic yes. speeches and, and, and had Nolte. Yeah, and had Nolte, and, and he ends each broadcast. This is Howard W. Camel Jr., the last free American broadcasting from Berlin. And uh, uh, Nolte, in order to survive, has done a hell of a lot of harm and uh, realizes it and uh, uh, eventually turns himself into the Israelis for trial. Uh, 
and uh, what the moral of the story is. People should read the book, incidentally. Yeah. It's, the, and it's a good the, idea. <laughs> the moral of the story, which I say didactically is, we are what we pretend to be, so we must be careful what we pretend to be. And on a much more trivial level, uh, I've known people in advertising or public relations or publicity or whatever representing terrible clients, you know, dictators or whatever. But what they're able to say to themselves is, this wasn't really me. Yeah. You know, the real me is inside, and I, all German. I may be doing the dictator's bidding, but it's uh, not me. Yeah, and everybody knows who I really am and how I feel, but uh, all of Germany, as people my age who were, who were uh, in World War II, are saying one way or another, that wasn't really me. Is I'm the person who loves children and flowers and music. And uh, there are a hell of a lot of people all over the world who've been involved in atrocities who are saying, well, it wasn't really me. You know what right. the real me is. It was yeah. the system. Yeah. All right, let me take a look at this uh, clip. This is when the recruitment of Howard Campbell, uh, played by Nick Nolte. Take a look. Here it is. So why does, no why does Campbell do it? He... Not just because he loves his wife and wants to no, stay in Germany. he is in theater. Yeah. For one thing, in the book, he says at one point, he's a ham. <laughs> and This is the irresistible challenge of yes. life and death. Well, of course, actors are alive only on stage. Yeah. And uh, pretending to be a Nazi, he is on stage and getting away with it. That's what every actor wants to do, is get away with it. Are writers only alive when they're writing? Are you only alive when you're putting pen to paper? I have talked to different sorts of artists about when the payoff is, is what the thrill is. And the, uh, a painter, for instance, loves to lay on paint. And, Tactile. Yeah, and, and hates the gallery opening right. and, and right. saying hello and the wine and cheese and all that. Yeah. Uh, an architect is, gets his thrill when he sees a model of the building or a rendering of it. Mm -hmm. It's a nightmare when the thing has to be yeah. <laughs> has to actually be built. A writer gets his kick, and it doesn't last very long. Is taking a manuscript and handing it to an editor and saying, "Here, this is yours." <laughs> to get relieved of that burden. Yeah, but I, I don't. I, I certainly don't enjoy writing much now. You don't. Well, I don't think many writers do. We had a. Uh, that dinner party one time with a bunch of writers, and uh, they, were, they were all saying how comfortable it is to write and what a lousy yeah. job it is. And one person said, I just love it. And he or she was the only person there who wasn't a very good writer. I was going to say that. Was that the least accomplished <laughs> among you? Yeah. Now, what does that say, I mean, that, that to do it well is painful and hard and, and to go through it? I. Well, you have to be good. It's like golf. It's, and <laughs> everything is your own fault, you know, yeah. is whatever happens. And uh, if you write a lot... Well, the golfers good. dream that they get better, you know, somehow. Yeah. And, and one shot, one shot in one round will bring them back for another 18. Yes. Well, but you, we have... The well, writers have the problem of growing old. And critics seem to be very unsympathetic about this. But as an actuarial matter, American male writers have done their best work by the time they're 55. And then it's pretty junky after that. And this is true of Mark Twain, surely. It's true of me. It's true of Kurt Vonnegut. It's true of Kurt you, Vonnegut. You, everything you did, I mean, what was a year for you? Well, You haven't done anything since you were 55 that was anywhere near comparable to what you did before you were No, 55. no. And uh, uh, we just all grow old, and we have to be a good sport about this. <laughs> no, I'm not. The older my father got, the dumber he got, and the same thing is happening to me. You mean just and, losing brain cells, do you think? Or? Well, of course, it's losing everything. Uh, but, well, I take our greatest playwright, greater than, than Eugene O'Neill, which is Tennessee Williams. And toward the end, 
as you know the critics were wondering what the hell had happened to him you know yeah. <laughs> that, that he wasn't writing the way he used to and of course the problem is he he grew old it i broke his heart one time when i first met him is i thanked him profusely for the glass menagerie which he had written 20 years ago <laughs> 20, 30 years I, I want to see if we got another clip, because I, I like that movie a lot. Okay, take a look at this, and then we'll come back to you. Uh, this is where Campbell's father-in-law is a Nazi commander, tells him he was an inspiration as a Nazi. Yeah. Set that up for me. Is there more to add to that? No, that's fine. All it's... right, take a look. Here it is from Mother Night, starring Nick Nolte. Great! <laughs> I mean, so he's sitting there saying... <laughs> What else are you working on? Well, I keep trying to do one more book because I owe one more book contractually to Putnam, and yeah. I think I've got it. I, is this time quake? Yes. In one book, I forget which, I've graded all my books. I've given myself A plus, all B right. minus, well, well, all right. you can't, C. All right. I think it's a B minus. It's a B minus. Well, then, okay, yeah. let's go through the list then. Who would you give an A to? Oh, I'd give an A plus to Cat's Cradle. Oh, sure. I'd give an A plus to Mother Night. I mean, yeah, to Mother, Mother Night, Night okay. you bet, and and to Slaughterhouse Five. So they get A pluses, just yes. three A pluses. This is much better than I ever did in college. Yeah. And how well did you do? <laughs> well, not that good. I didn't get three A pluses. So uh, what A's though? Anything? And you got an A there? Well, we we got some C's and yeah. and B's. And, and what was and, a failure? Uh, well, I said slapstick was a failure yeah. because critics hated it so much, and I figured they knew more about well, it than I, I, I did. I never figure that. Yeah. But anyway, I would give this a B minus, and that's that's not bad I'm for a, a guy. B minus. Yeah. yeah, you're happy though. Well, I'm reasonably yeah, you, content. Pretty... Well, I'm I'm I'm, uh, I'm not surprised to to, to uh, have my powers fail. Yeah, I'm a and... good sport about it. Well, and I don't I... think your powers have failed you. It's just uh, that you don't think they're as good as they were at their I best am... when you were at an A plus level. Also, is well, Herman Melville talks about whalers and and why they don't talk. Why? They've said absolutely <laughs> <laughs> everything they could possibly say. <laughs> well, then, uh, Kurt Vonnegut has not said everything he could possibly no, say. No, but I, I... He may not be able to say it as well as No, he. but here my books are all yeah. in print, and they're, they're doing the talking for me, and that was essentially the yeah. ideas I had. Not a bad legacy, huh? I hope. What novelist inspired you the most? It's hard to tell, because I don't keep track of that sort of thing, but I grew up in a house full of books. Yeah. And uh, if you're a kid and, and you're into reading, uh, we had a set, a whole set of George Bernard Shaw. And I got hooked on him at an early age, and particularly the prefaces he wrote to each play. Yeah. Uh, but I think when I was... Uh, about 12, I found Aristophanes, you know, and Lysistrata as a dirty play and all that. And uh, so, uh, yeah, I've had a lot of fun reading and, and fortunately was reading really good books. Uh, and it shaped you. Yes. Kurt Vonnegut, the film is called Mother Night, as the book is called Mother Night. It got an A-plus in the writer's own evaluation of the book, and the movie is getting some good reviews. We'll be right back. Stay with us.